Great. And I think we're live. Thanks, David. Hi, everybody. Hello, all you amazing educators. I hope you're well, and thank you for being here with us. If you're here for Adobe XD, you're in the right place. I'm Tara Knight, and for three years, I've been leading Adobe UX education efforts. What started out as introducing Adobe XD to educators and students from design departments in higher ed has expanded to exploring a multitude of departments and disciplines where user experience design, human-centered design, collaboration, and prototyping come into play, which is a lot of spaces. The relationships and partnerships we've built and continue to learn from uh, really extend beyond colleges and universities to online learning arenas and secondary education. And if I had a bigger team, believe me, I would love to work with some grade school students too. So uh, today, I'm briefly going to cover the basics of XD as a UX and UI design tool. And then I want to broaden the scope to view XD as a thought process hub where individuals or teams or cohorts can come together to ideate, create, and present. And I'll be sure to run through the many, many resources for you and your students to learn XD. So a little bit about XD, right? So at its core, XD is a user experience design platform. It's used to bring uh, designed real to life, interactive digital prototypes for web-based desktop, mobile app experiences and myriad other digital interfaces. The goal of building this all encompassing platform is to bring together all these capabilities of wireframing, animating, prototyping and sharing your work with others all under one hood. And so, this kind of all-in-one platform really um, provides teams, or maybe it's one individual who can do all of these things uh, on their own, uh, a place where they can wireframe, design, prototype, present, collaborate, and when we're talking about bigger uh, corporate enterprises, create whole design systems uh, to leverage across multiple products and share that work with developers so that these prototypes can be built. And of course, it's part of the Adobe ecosystem. So you've got um, the benefit of working with other Creative Cloud applications like Photoshop, Illustrator. You can export XD uh, effects into After Effects and bring it all together in XD. And Creative Cloud Libraries allows you to share assets across various applications. And this is all powered by the cloud. So by leveraging Cloud Docs, you can invite others to your XD document and play in the same space. And it's more than a design tool. Uh, so it's an extensible platform, which means we're allowing third party developers to create plugins and workflow integrations. And these plugins are add ons installed within XD that really expand the possibilities of how you work and what you can create. And I'll be demonstrating a few. And as I mentioned, there are ample resources for learning via tutorial videos, articles, in addition to templates and UI kits. And these UI kits are worth highlighting here as an excellent source for learning and educating because these are all just downloadable XD files. These are representing how to use a particular feature like component states or auto animate or they're designed to show a specific use case, like maybe it's a marketing package or a multi-platform e-commerce experience or a smartwatch app. These are all online and you can access the link right from within XD's file menu, which I'm gonna show you right here. Um, and from here, see, because I'm in XD, because of course I'm presenting from XD. All right, so there we go. There's your get UI kits from the file menu. And I'm going to showcase a favorite, a uh, few of my favorite plugins from our very own international design team at Adobe because they continue to be so valuable, particularly during the past year plus with distance learning. This set of plugins 
really realize XD as a hub for group-based learning and brainstorming with whiteboard, then a design whiz and assistant basically for mobile app and web design with quick mock-up and a presentation tool to wrap it all together. So this really rounds out an incredible platform for designers and non-designers alike to ideate, create, and present. So XD is certainly made for designers, by designers, with designers, for this iterative process of designing, prototyping, sharing, and collaborating. And yet it's so accessible for non-design based learning too. So whether you're a design pro or you're looking at XD as a platform for group based learning in multiple disciplines, we can really switch this up to think of it not as a hub for your entire design process, but a hub for your entire thought process. And by the way, that was just 3D transforms in my presentation uh, using a very cool um, feature in XD. 3D transforms, Howard Pinsky, thanks for uh, helping me out with that. His tutorials are masterful. Um, so I wanna reframe the intent of XD to a broader um, kind of applicability, open to the possibilities of leveraging this platform in classroom settings. By demonstrating how you might ideate, create a space within XD for group-based learning and brainstorming, create by making an interactive prototype, whether that be an app, a website, a watch app, or other imaginative digital interface, and present to tell a story about what you just went through in your iterative process make it interactive and hey educators maybe you just want to use this presentation tool for your own lecture material so you may find the whole process appropriate for a project or you can pick it apart and just choose one activity then that can support your needs i hope um, i'd love to know your your thoughts in the chat when we explore this so i'm gonna get out of this and uh, show you where I've been here. This is my, my XD file. So here I am presenting from XD. These are my slides, right? And this is where we were at. This is my 3D transforms pair of slides with auto animate animating between this slide and that slide. And here are some slides that I'm going to glaze over a little bit, but they show the plethora of features that drive the design, prototyping, and collaboration capabilities of XD. And I'll absolutely be touching on some of these features as I go, go through this ideation, creation, and presentation flow. And let's see, let's zoom out some more. And show you what else we have here. Here are the resource slides that I'm going to come back to at the very end to show you where you can go to learn. And I want to set the stage a bit here. Down here, these are my all my artboards in my XD file for ideate, create, present. It's a whole flow. And just to set the stage, let's take a look at this mobile app as an example of what a final prototype solution might look like in your process. So I want to demo this plant app. And you might, I don't know if you can see me, um, but I've got a heck of a lot of plants in my background too. So um, it's all the theme. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, David. So, all right. So I'm going to preview. So NXD, top right, I have a preview button here to preview this prototype that I've built. So let me see if I can just make this full screen. There we go. And I'm going to take a moment to take out my headphones because I want to show that we've got voice prototyping featured in this app. So bear with me one moment. All right, hopefully you can still hear me, maybe a little bit um, quieter. So let's take a look at this plant app. 
app. It's got some interactivity to it. Beautiful little animation coming in. I've got some scrolling elements. I've got a nice little pop-up here with a slider. And I can select and go to new screens and select this guy. And this app, I can tell that the designer who created this created it at a time when we made scroll groups, a new feature that makes scrolling elements so much easier. It used to be a hack and difficult, and now it truly is just a click of a button to do this. And I've got a little search overlay, and I'm gonna select this from the bottom nav. Got some more scrolling, of course, and check this out. Okay, first, let's see what's going on here. Okay, cool. Some pan zoom action. So here's where I have a voice uh, interaction um, prototyped into this app. So I'm going to hold down my space bar and say shop sale. Here are our sale plants. That may have been a little bit quiet, but that was a voice playback. Pretty cool stuff. And so I was able to provide uh, a voice command and then be taken to another screen and receive back a voice playback, which is extremely fun to play with. I'm going to plug back in so my audio improves again. All right. Hopefully, I'm right back with you guys. And so let's Let's get back to our XD file. And I just want to orient you, if you are new to XD, let's just give a quick review of the interface. Starting on the, the left here, you've got your toolbar, pretty basic stuff. You've got some shapes, lines, text, and your artboard tool, which defines the, the size of the screen that you are designing for. And I'm just using my trackpad to zoom in and out here. And then when I've got something I'm working on, um, and I'm selecting in design mode here. Look at the top left corner. You've got design, prototype, and share mode. So I'm in design mode. And when I select something, the properties panel on the right is contextually aware that, hey, I've got some text selected and I'm able to make changes here to the text. And so, um, zooming back out, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of the how. I really want to. Um, maintain this idea of the process of ideate, uh, create, and present. So, um, but just really quickly, because we're going to be looking at some plugins, I want to point out you may not see uh, the entirety of the bottom left corner, but you've got this panel here. These three buttons at the bottom left, you have your document assets and libraries. You've got, secondly, your layers panel. And then at the bottom, you have the plugins panel. And this is where you can install those extra cool tools that expand your possibilities of creation and impact your workflow. And you can install those plugins right here from your plugins um, menu. And you're going to be able to browse plugins. And just note that this is going to pop up a, a window in your Creative Cloud um, desktop app that shows a whole marketplace of plugins that you can browse. OK, so I've got some of these installed already. And let's have a look at our first step um, in this flow of ideation. So how would one um, get to that beautiful plant app? And I'm proposing that you can start um, anyone, whether you're a designer or non-designer, you start from paper. Um, and you also um, have all kinds of activities um, that you can do to brainstorm what would make a fantastic solution. So these templates that I'm showing you here are from this plugin called Whiteboard. And I'm going to pull this up in the panel on the left. 
So you can see in my plugins panel, all of these beautiful templates that have been provided from various design um, kind of leaders. You've got Lotus Blossom, you've got Persona and use cases um, and all kinds of great things, even drawing uh, templates that uh, can allow you to create some, some sketches on the fly within XD. And with every template, for instance, this design thinking canvas, you've got some instruction on how to actually use it. So you might browse these to see what fits the purpose of your needs. And you might share these with your students and give them a selection of templates or let them choose what works for them. Here's a customer journey map. Um, and I've got an example of templates that I filled out for that plant app um, proposing, okay, we've got a basic app, how can we make it better? And I went through this exercise and filled out all of these little post-its and imagine if you want to make this a group project, as long as you've saved this document as a cloud doc, you can invite people in to, to play with it right now. Right now, um, I think my machine is doing a little bit too much at one time, so I can't show you, but this is the dialogue to invite someone to your document, right? And just type in their email address and they'll get an invitation and then they can come in and play with you. So teams of students could be working on this together. And I love that um, going through this exercise with a colleague of mine, um, Lance at Adobe, who actually leads the team who built this plugin, Whiteboard, created some absolutely um, delightful drawings and really came up with a solution um, when playing with this drawing capability within Whiteboard about how someone's frustrated that their plants are dying and what can they do and what can the plant app afford them. So really sweet and I gave Lance a thumbs up and told him it was really cute and a smiley face because it just really gave me so much pleasure. So that's the whiteboard um, plugin and you've got beyond just these templates here, you've got elements. So you've got little happy and sad faces and all kinds of things and post-its that you can select and bring onto your um, canvas as well as these doodads for creating flowcharts and all kinds of, um, you know, supplemental um, icons and miscellany. And then you can actually select an artboard and um, I'll show you just how poorly I draw with NXD just like this. <laughs> so I select an artboard and I, I ask uh, to start drawing and you've got a pen tool here and you can create some color. So this can be a fun space to kind of ideate, get those creative juices flowing as well. So I'll hit done. So once you've got, um, you know, your, your fantastic ideas kind of um, on paper or on XD, the next stage is to create you know, what, what kind of solution are you ready to, to start building? And a designer starting from zero here might draw everything themselves and create some wireframes on their own. And just for the sake of showing um, the first and still the ultimate feature of XD, Repeat Grid, they might leverage Repeat Grid to do some really quick um, things here and going to actually, um, let's go ahead and go to prototype mode too. And let me show you that fancy, oops, let me show you that fancy, um, push button for scroll groups. Actually, it's in the design mode. It's just a button. And then let's go ahead and preview that. And there it's scrolling just like that. So easy. And in prototype mode, maybe we want to just link these screens together. And we will preview that as well. So boom, you've got some linked screens. And perhaps you also want to share this with someone to test it out. 
and you've created a link, you create a link, I'm going to go ahead and update this link so that you might be able to share this with somebody else to say, hey, is this working for you? Test it out for me and provide them a URL so that they can look in the browser. And just like you preview NXD, they can preview your wireframe in browser mode. So they don't have to have XD. And you can also um, have it so that you can make comments. So I think this is fantastic um, for teacher student experience too. Um, this has a lot of applicability in so many ways. So get some dialogue going via a browser, have some feedback, pin some things to the artboard. So that's sharing. And that has a lot of um, different, I have a lot of different ideas how that can be used. Um, curious to know what you all are thinking too. So in an iterative process, a designer may be doing this all by hand and getting to this high fidelity state of bringing in pictures and um, making it truly real to life. Now, I also want to show how a non-designer might get to a similar state of a high fidelity working interactive prototype, leveraging another plugin so that they don't have to create uh, all of those designs by hand. They can leverage Quick Mockup. So this is Quick Mockup here. And here are templates for, as you can see, these are for desktop, you know, so here's some website designs for blog based content or e commerce based um, solution or portfolios, help page, sign in page, and there are templates for mobile as well. So these really just, you just click them and they come onto your canvas. So you find something that looks about right. So any non-designer should be sketching as well too. That's so important to get your ideas on paper and then start to think, okay, what looks relatively similar to the idea that I have in mind? And then you can select the one that you've chosen. You know, this, let's say we really need to add a blog section to our plant app. And then I can apply a theme and there happens to be a theme in Quick Mockup um, that has some plants. Uh, in it. So I apply a theme to the basic wireframe and it makes it really beautiful and it has some stock imagery applied and some good typography and some color choices. And then that non-designer student can start tweaking it, you know, bring in a little plant uh, picture that you've selected. Um, maybe you want make some changes to the text get that lorem ipsum adapted to some true text and start tweaking, but not designing the whole thing from scratch. So they can really get far here. Um, all right, so let's move on to presenting. So this is yet another plugin, right? I'm really, um, I'm really in love with these plugins from our team. And there's one called presentation. So, and let me just, since we're here, um, let me also just say that anyone, designer or non-designer, can um, start a mood board. You know, your art board selection here in the tool lets you create any size art board. So it's a great space to just keep everything all in one doc, all of your inspiration, um, all of your type treatment ideas, your color palettes, and the advanced um, student might take it to the next level and start adding their colors and even their components, their reusable elements like these nav bars to the document assets. So you see here in my assets panel, I have my colors and I have typography treatments as character styles and I have these components, um, reusable elements like buttons and icons and some card designs here that were all used in the plant app. And then next, next level 
from adding your design elements, style guide elements to document assets is actually publishing a library from XD that you can then leverage in other projects so that it is, you know, in, in fancy terms, it's a design system that others can use for um, projects that are branded um, similarly as your source kind of library. Okay, so getting to presentation, um, you know, the concept being you've ideated, you've come up with this fantastic app solution, you've designed a bit of an app, and now you want to create a presentation to show off how you came to your decisions, right? And you can incorporate some of the data that you pulled from your whiteboard sessions or snapshots of the app or solution that you designed. So just like quick mock-up, these screens here, these artboards were pulled from the plugin that I'll pull up here in the plugin panel. It's presentation and it's just loading up here. Um, and so you see that I have various choices here of I've already selected a theme. Again, it's got that plant theme and there are so, so many um, templated, beautifully designed slides from this presentation plugin, including some um, data visualization, some graphics, some infographics here. I really am excited about this and I've used it quite a bit in my own work at Adobe presenting. Um, so I highly recommend it and I'd love to know if any of you are interested in using this in your own lecture material. So I've applied the theme, I've selected some of these templates, I've plugged in some um, of my text thinking, okay, strategically, the plant app, we want to add some storytelling to it, we want to add a community section, and I'm going to pull some pull quotes from our user base. And then let's see, let me see if I can pull in some, now let's see, some photography of my own. Bear with me here while I grab the applicable photo from gorgeous plant photo shoot. Here we go. So maybe you don't want to stick with just the template, but you want to pull in some of your own images, right? And in fact, I've also got some other images here from these augmented screens here up here that were created with Quick Mockup. I exported those artboards as PNG files so I can actually bring in those into these little Let's just pull this down. There we go. So you've got a branded presentation. And I'll pull this guy in here too. And bring it down. Cool. And then, just like I was presenting my slides to you before, I can preview. I'll go ahead and go into full screen mode, and I have my presentation here. And only one, two of those screens were actually um, linked together. So I go to prototype mode, and these two are linked. Let's link these together too. So I just drag a wire, and I see that it's it's got the right, I just want to do a simple transition, maintain just the basic default dissolve animation, and duration and just click screen to screen here so that you can click through your presentation and you can also do what we did before and share this so that somebody might look at it in a browser view so you've got some options here so either you're presenting from xd and going through your presentation here and or you go to share mode and you create a link. Let's see, 
Let's make sure this is selected here. Share. I want to share this presentation out of all of my elements in this XD file. I'm going to create a link. And just like we saw before, it'll create a shareable URL or you can make it password protected, invite very specific people to view this. Um, and it's creating that public link right now. And again, bandwidth is a little strapped, but it's coming here. There we go. And I'll click on that link. And here's my presentation again. And I can tap through it. And because um, I have choices as far as how someone uh, views this whole prototype um, or presentation, I've maintained the design review view so that commenting is still here. So perhaps this is kind of an interactive um, place where people can comment and, and curate a presentation that they're working on as a group. Going back to XD, I'm going to go back to design mode. And I just want to customize this a little bit more. And I see that they've got this green color. And you can imagine, I mentioned before that I had all of my colors from my color palette here in my document assets. And what happens, presentation, when I pull in this presentation from the plugin, it also provides me a color. This green color is represented here um, as the brand color from presentation. And what if I want to make it my brand color? So I can go ahead and edit this color that came in from the plugin. And let's say we want to pull this color, this green. So I'm just going to copy this color and then edit this one and paste that. And it's a very subtle difference, but you see now um, my brand color has changed to that deeper plant green. And you could do the same with character styles as well. So all of these character styles at the top here were also brought in when I selected this presentation from the plugin. So if I wanted to make changes, let's see this, um, not sure, paragraph, boom, 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 boom. Let's say, here we go, this is header L. If I wanna make changes here, I can edit and say, I'd like you to be using my brand type, which is Tito, and there you go. So it's changed across the board wherever that style was applied. All right, so I've got much more that I'd love to show, um, but I'd also want to make sure that you check out the learning resources. So I'm going to zoom back out and I'm going to go up here to my learn resources slides and let's just have a look here. So there are so many places to learn. Um, first and foremost, you should know that in XD, you can always access this learn hub, the XD learn hub from XD. So when I just come to my home screen, in XD, this is what you see when you open up the application or when you select Command N to start a new file. You can see along the left rail here, there is a Learn tab right there. So that can take you right to our amazing resources. Um, you can get started with a step-by-step -step guide um, where Danny Beaumont is going to show you how to do everything and you can get to the fancy, fancy prototyping with Howard Pinsky, who's just amazing. And he comes up with the most beautiful, beautiful designs. And let's go back here. There we go. 
you can view a lot of beautiful projects by the community and Behance. Hopefully you're going to Behance all the time and sending your students there as well. And perhaps you have your own work on Behance. The daily creative challenge is a really cool way for students to learn, but I also think it's a great resource for educators because you can always get the files and, and take the, the kind of challenges um, yourself and use them, leverage them. They're XD files, just like the UI kits are XD files. So something to explore if you want to play with some existing files um, that have been pre-built um, and work your way through XD in a really fun way. And then of course, Howard Pinsky, um, in addition to all of his material being on the Learn Hub, he also has his own YouTube channel that you can subscribe to and keep up to date with all the latest features and fantastic things he creates. XD Ideas is a really wonderful resource. Um, this is a blog that really provides a lot of insight and, um, and a lot of voices from industry on the practice, business, and impact of design. And if you're on the Twitter, you can check out Adobe XD at Adobe XD. A couple of announcements I have because one of the best learning um, arenas for students is a creative jam. And there is one coming up um, August 18th. And this is by our stellar team, uh, the creative jam live team, who's been doing virtual events and just hasn't nailed. And um, they're doing another one with Target. And you can see, um, I'm hoping that we can plug these URLs in the chat too. But you can see here um, the URL for registering for this event. And I also want to make mention of um, a very special project, um, the Design Circle Scholarship. Recently, we awarded 10 new scholarship winners for the second year of this initiative that seeks to provide opportunity to underserved and underrepresented students who want to study product UX design, interaction design. And by the way, um, I used XD to pull together the assets for the, our social team who wanted to post an Instagram story. So I will pull that up for you. Um, while we recognize um, these amazing students and schools that were represented. So let me share that with you. Here is the design for the Instagram story. You can see that it's, it's very simple and it's prototyped together. And I'll go ahead and preview that. And I want to give a shout out to these amazing students, like I said, and the schools that they represent are Ateneo de Manila University, Leslie University, Sheridan College, shout out to Mark Shufflebottom, um, George Washington University, Rochester Institute of Technology, Syracuse University, University of Southern California, Arizona State University, School of Visual Arts, and Savannah College of Art and Design. And so I'm going to try and throw uh, another URL in the chat for you all to learn more about this scholarship so that you can tell your students about it. And I think we're uh, just about at time there. So I'm going to go ahead and say thank you very much for being here with me. Um, I miss your voices. I miss your faces. I wish that uh, we could all be in the same room together, and I hope you're having a fantastic summit. Take care. So thank you so much, Tara, for, for sharing all of that with us today. And I've been uh, posting some of those links that you shared in the chat, so um, some great feedback from there. And I just wanted to share some high-level um, comments. I did see, I know you mentioned Mark Shufflebottom, so I did see him in the chat. Um, oh, we have a couple questions. Um, oh, these are coming in so fast. Um, Diane says, I miss you too. We miss you too, Diane. Hope we can be together in person. Uh, Monique and Brian say thank you. 
And um, there's another question about new features um, mm -hmm. in Adobe XD. And of course, um, depending on, you know, obviously there is some um, I can't sneak people, yes. <laughs> but let's, let's just say that you better stay tuned at max. Um, I can tell you that something that has been long awaited will come. <laughs> so okay. I really can't. Um, I can't divulge, um, but I wish I could. Um, but but we've got something fantastic coming at Max, so stay tuned for that. Okay. And um, just some more feedback. Monique says, love the challenge, didn't know it was there. We'll be checking that out for sure. Uh, Mark says, I wanted to dive into XT for years now, and this gives me um, finally an inspiration to jump in. And um, Kevin loved the XD daily challenges. And there is a Discord server that adds community to the challenges. Um, and then I'm looking, I thought I had seen another question. There was another question about the recording of this session. We are recording it. It is available on the Canopy platform until August 7th. And then after the fact, we will be um, Uh, and on Adobe for Education YouTube. Um, and I'm looking, our Adobe Education leaders are so amazing. Many answered a lot of the questions that were in here. Yay, thank you. Um, <laughs> and then Joel says the presentation plugin is going to be a game changer. Thank you so much, Tara. Cool. I, I want to see what you create. I'd love to just have a check in. Clara, can you just get us all together and see? Um, I want to see these, <laughs> these presentations. All right. Absolutely. Yes, we'd love to have another um, meet up with our Adobe education leaders, our Adobe creative educators. Um, so thank you again, Tara, so much for sharing this uh, with us today. Any final words or um, follow ups I for do. people to get in touch? I actually have one um, comment that I'd like to make for our power users. Um, this may be a little um, far reaching, but just in case. Um, if you all are using a linked asset workflow, um, Mark, Kevin, I'm looking at you. If you've if you've used XD in such a manner that you are copying from one document um, and pasting into another, so that those assets are linked and the the parent document is the source of that asset and by changing it you will change um, you'll have the ability to update the child documents that share that asset i want you all to know that that is scheduled to change in september and we're being really proactive about letting people know this and so you may have already if you are indeed using this workflow you may have already seen um, little um, toast notifications in XD saying, hey, this is going to change and this is what you do. Um, I want you to know that um, there is a happy path and we're really just leading people to start using Creative Cloud libraries because we've worked so hard to um, get libraries up to this capability of really being that central um, kind of um, base for your assets that you want to reuse across multiple documents. So there are um, a bunch of, uh, there are a couple of help docs. I'm putting this in our internal chat with Clara. Um, there are a couple of things. There is a help document and an XD Learn video about how you migrate your design systems to Creative Cloud libraries. and Danny Boma is going to have a webinar on August 3rd to show you just that. Um, so I've provided that link, uh, Clara, if you could share that with everybody, that would be great too. Perfect. So I'm just that, putting these all in the chat now. Thank we'll you. We'll do that really quickly. So we have that thank all so set. And I see a note from Kevin here. He says, great, thank you for the heads up. Cool. You so bet, Kevin. Me in here great well i think all those links are shared um thank you again tara so much for taking the time uh, to share this with us today it's a pleasure thank you clara thank you everybody you have a wonderful day thank you bye bye now